Greetings and welcome to www.rei-tv.com. I am Nick, your host. I'm glad to be here and I hope you're glad to be there. Uh, today we're talking about ways to fill a lease option property. When you've got a property that you either bought subject to or that you bought with a lease option or maybe that you bought with seller financing, we need to fill those properties because let's face it, the longer that thing sits there, the more mortgage payments we make to the bank on behalf of the seller. So the last thing we want to do is to have a property sitting there empty that we're making payments on. Now something I've been doing lately and it's easy to do now because of the situation that the industry is in is I've been, I've been getting my contracts when I'm buying subject to or when I'm buying with seller financing or and there's a lot of that going on it seems now but when I'm buying subject to or when I'm buying with a lease option which I don't do much I've been putting a contingency in the mortgage in the, not the mortgage in the contract that states contract is contingent on buyer finding a suitable tenant so I'm telling those sellers right up front that here's what we're going to do and I'm laying it all out but Mr. Seller I'm not closing on that house until I have somebody that's ready to move in. So you have to give me full access to the house during the escrow period so I can show people that house. And as soon as I find someone that's ready to rent it from me, then I'll go ahead and close and buy it from you. And it's been working like a charm. I've never, I've not had one person tell me no, as a matter of fact, knock on, knock on noggin. So, um, but what I want to talk about today is how to move these properties when you're selling them with lease option exit strategy, when it needs some work. When you got a house that you're buying sub to and it needs new carpeting or it needs paint or usually both, it's got a couple holes in the wall or it needs some work on the fence outside or whatever it might be. It just basically needs some work. Now I'm not talking about needing a whole rehab. Of course in that case it might work. Well no, nobody's going to buy a rehab. Nobody's going to lease a rehab and go in and put all the work. Not nobody with with any sense as a matter of fact. But like I said before, there's people that crawl out from under rocks sometimes and that's why uh, you hear some of these horror stories about this industry. Hopefully I'm trying to keep you from making some of these mistakes that I made when I first started. That wasn't one of them, but I made plenty. But in any case, so when you got a house that you're trying to fill with a lease option and it needs some work done to it, there's ways to fill that house without going and putting a bunch of money into it. And especially if you're a newbie investor. If you're new and this is your first or your second deal or, uh, you know, or for some reason you just don't have cash to put in. So let's face it, sometimes we, we run into super deals that we could take sub two, but the house needs four or five thousand bucks worth of work to really make it attractive. Now, nowadays, because of the way the industry, the, the way the market is right now, lenders are playing right into our greedy little hands by tightening up the mortgage situation. It's really tough to get a mortgage right now. People that, you know, a year ago could have got 100% financed can't get a mortgage right now. I mean, there's people that have money to put down. They don't have an 800 credit score, but there's people with 700 credit scores that are getting turned down on mortgages right now. I mean, a year ago, they were selling houses to people that I wouldn't even rent to. But so because of all the foreclosures, as you know, I, should, I don't need to be telling you this, because of all the foreclosures that switch now, and it's tough to get a mortgage. That plays into our hands because what? There's plenty of people out there looking, rent to own is real attractive. Let's just put it that way. There's plenty of people that are going to look at your house as rent to own. Now, in a lot of cases, like I said, you've got a house that needs some work. And if you don't have the money to put in the house, here's how you market the property. You market it rent to own, work for equity. Or you market it rent to own. Now, I say rent to own. In your part of the country, maybe they call it a rent to own. Maybe they call it lease to own. Maybe they call it lease option, which is, you know, what we call it in the industry. But most parts of the country, I think rent to own is probably the, the most appropriate thing to market. But whatever it is, make sure you're using the right words. But rent to own, work for equity, or rent to own, your hammer equals money, or your hammer equals equity, or your sweat equals cash, or something like that. Put that in your ads, put that on your signs, get that out there. That's the overriding theme that you want to have in your marketing and what you want to stress when you're talking to these people on the phone because your marketing and the way you talk to folks on the phone should be similar everything in your business should, should, should be you know they should be walking down a similar path so things are familiar to them um, so market it rent to own work for equity or, or, or whatever it might be now remember if it's a hundred and let's say it's a hundred eighty thousand dollar house you're picking it up for 145 sub two you really can't sell it for 180 you can't make that the option price for your buyer if you're telling them rent, to, rent, you know, work for equity. So if it's 145 that you're paying, and the sign says work for equity, you can't. If it's worth 180, 
you got to sell it to them for 170, 175, or something like that to keep stay consistent and to stay legitimate and honest. So, but what you're going to tell people when they call, and I just closed a deal like this two weeks ago. Well, I guess it's three weeks ago now or so. But the property needed some work. It needed paint. There was a hole in the wall. It needed, it, you know, I, I think it needed two carpeting, but they went in and cleaned the carpeting and it was fine. The whole area, the whole property needed cleaning. It was dirty. It had some little knickknacks, a couple cabinets falling apart, that type of thing. So when I took calls on this property, when people called, you know, I explained to them, you know, hi, hi Mr. Buyer, uh, this house is available, rent to own. Now let me give you a tip too. Don't just say rent to own and assume that they know what that means when you're selling with a, with a lease, lease option or lease purchase or whatever it is. A rent to own to you might be different than a rent to own to me. I mean, you, I'm sure your contract has different stipulations than mine and it's different from state to state. So here's what I always do. They call on the ad, hi, I'm calling on the ad in the paper about the rent to own. And I'll say, Mr. Seller, I mean, Mr. Buyer, do you know what a rent to own works? Do you know how it works? And even if they say, yes, I do, I explain to them how it works. You know, with a rent to own, here's what happens is, and I go ahead and I explain the details. And in my case, I explain to them, you know, with the rent to own, uh, basically most people that are looking, and I say most people to make it seem to them like everybody wants this house. But most people that are calling me about this house, they'd like to buy the house, but right now for one reason or another, they can't get financed. They need a little bit of time to get their down payment or get their credit up or whatever it might be, Mr. Buyer. And um, with the rent to own, there's no security deposit. And I always point that out because it sounds really positive. So with the rent to own, Mr. Buyer, there is no security deposit. But what we get instead is an option fee. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a down payment. Now, you can't call it a down payment. You can say it's an option fee. It's kind of like a down payment. And then I go ahead to explain to them it's kind of like a down payment. So when you end up buying the house in a year or so, it all, it comes off the price of the house. So it's similar to a down payment, but technically it's an option fee, and it gives you the right to buy the house. Um, and then I ask, what type of a, how much of an option fee can you afford right now? What can you come up with for that type of thing? And, and I, never, I really never tell them what I want. I always want to hear from them first to let me know. Because, I mean, I might be thinking I want five grand down. They might come back with, well, I can give you 10000 Well, duh, if I said five grand, I just cost myself 5000 bucks, right? So always ask them first. And usually they waffle a little bit or they're really not sure. But in any case... So let's say, you know, they say, I, I say, what kind of money can you put down as an option fee? And they say, well, I can come up with a couple thousand dollars. Um, I would come back with, let's say that I wanted 5000 for this one. I would come back with, well, Mr. Buyer, I was looking for $10,000 as an option fee. But what I can do, the house needs a little bit of work, like it says in the sign. So if you're willing to go in there and take care of the carpets and the paint and that hole that's in the wall and, and fix the railing on the front porch, those couple other things that need done, if you're willing to take the house in the shape it is now without me having to go in there and spend any extra money, I can do it for $5,000 as an option deposit instead of the 10. I, I really want a 10, but for you, I'll take the five if you're willing to do that work. And then you negotiate from there. Now, they might come back and say, well, you know, Nick, like I said, I can only come up with a couple thousand dollars. Depending, I mean, if I've got a lot of people calling me on this house, I'll probably take their information. I'll probably have them go look at the house. But I'll probably tell them, call me back after you look at it. Let, let, let me, let, let's see what happens. I really did want more down, and I'll wait. If, that's if I have a lot of calls. If I'm not getting a lot of calls, I'm going to have them go look at the house, and, and then I'm going to come back with, well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Buyer, you know, like I said in the call, the first time we talked, I really wanted a $5,000 option fee, but I told you we'd see what we could do. You said you could come up with two thousand. If you can come up with three thousand now, and then give me an extra two fifty a month for the next eight months, I think I might be able to do it. That type of thing. And again, it's supply and demand. If you've got a lot of buyers, see what happens over the next week. You can come back to them, or if you just want to get it moved, move it. Take the two thousand and work with them. But in any case, that's a way to fill lease option deals when it needs work and you don't have the money to put out of your pocket to get the work done. Just basically, whatever you want is your option fee. Let them know you want it more, but if you're willing to take the house in the condition it's in, I'll reduce that fee for you because I think you're just such a swell tenant and I can't wait to have you in there paying me rent. Um, so, so it'll work. Though. I, it, really is, it really is a good thing to try. And, and i got to tell you, 95% of the properties I have, I do nothing to. Zero. I do absolutely no work to 95% of the properties that I buy subject to or lease option or seller financing. I take them as is. I fill them as is. But you got to ask. I 
tell people that all the time. You gotta ask, okay? Um, always be confident, never seem desperate, and be in control. Um, oh, I got a little bit of BS for you. Here's your daily BS. Flippin' Midnight! Don't forget, on the first and third Friday of the month at Flippin' Midnight, I'm live. You can get me live. Uh, it's midnight Eastern time, so it's 11 o'clock Central, and it is 9 o'clock Pacific time, first and third Friday of the month. Log in to www.rei-tv.com, click on the little thing right over there that says Flippin' Midnight, and you'll catch me there. We can chat live, talk shop, ask me questions, have a little drink together, get to know each other a little bit better. Remember, first and third Fridays of the month. Thanks for visiting. I hope today was helpful. Now go buy a house.